Glory to Jesus. My brethren, peace of the Lord. We're going to open up our Bibles in the book of Acts. Acts 17. Book of Acts, chapter 17. From verse 10, Acts 17, verse 10. Amen. Amen. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. Amen. We're going to um, speak this morning about a topic that is, is ignored for many, ignored too many. It is the uh, b a Bible school, and we're going to we're going to realize that the Sunday school is fundamental for our spirit spiritual growth. Firstly, because when we speak of Bible school, we speak of teaching. What is the school? The youth is a place where you learn something. School is a place where you go to be instructed, to be educated, to be taught. And when we speak about Sunday school, we speak about the teaching, the biblical teaching, and uh, the teaching of the Word. That's what we have every Sunday, this moment here for the church. Because if we live only off of having church services, like the one with the songs that we just sang here, this type of song, should be sang every service, even during pleading. You already begin here, already geared up, S on high speed. Service is uh, a service like, it's a hot service, uh, Pentecostal service, where will you feel the moving of the Holy Spirit. And that's wonderful. It's, it's great. But there are moments in which we need to understand understand the word not only the results of a service not only the result of miracle result of a miracle pay attention Moses he came out of Egypt with the people Moses was all there all the way there on the mount receiving the commandments and the people comes Moses take a long while, and you know what they did? They made a, a golden calf, and then when Moses came back, he gets upset, he breaks everything up. So then the Lord told him, Moses, I'm not going with you anymore. I'm going to send the angels, and then you go, but I'm not going to go with these people. Um, I regret it. Now I'm not going with these people. And you know what Moses did? He prayed to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. If you don't go with us, we, sh we should not even leave this place. That was the prayer of Moses. If you don't go with us, we should not even leave this place. And what does he have to do with the message? What does he have to do with this teaching? What did Moses say there as he was praying to the Lord? 
Lord. We don't want to only see angels. We don't want to see the miracle alone. We not only want to see the miracle, the, the wonder. We want to see your presence. So Moses understood something that the people had not understood yet. Moses understood something that many Christians have not understood yet. Because uh, Christian want to see miracle, he want to see a uh, result of prayer. Many want want this, but the learn the knowing the Lord, of being with the Lord is more important than the miracle. Miracle is result. A prophetic uh, gift, a cure. This is the result of a life with the Lord. Moses said, "Lord, we don't want to see the miracles." We want to have you in our midst, and that's more important. And what I want to say here is that it's very good to have services, vigils, but there are moments where the Christian needs to learn about the doctrine. He needs to know the Word. The Christian needs to know the God of Israel. He needs to know God truly. And there is another example, which is Jesus. Jesus came to the world in the last three years of his life and his ministry. The last three years he dedicated to his ministry. He left the father and mother. He left everything. He left the, the work of carpentry. He left the family and left everything and began to preach about the new kingdom, the lost pearl what the new kingdom, the salvation through the grace, the new commandment, the new teaching. But in order for this to happen, the crowd needed to see the miracles, the wonders. They wanted to see what the operation of God, uh, the, what God did through the ministry of Jesus. And it is interesting that those same disciples, the crowd that followed Jesus, the same ones that said, Glory to God, when the bread was multiplied, when the blind saw, when the, the paralyzed walked, all the ones, the ones that were giving glory to God, the same who were saying, This is the man that we were waiting for, this is the Messiah, this is truly the Son of God. The same people said also there, Crucify him. Crucify him. We want Barabbas. Crucify him. Some of the disciples denied Jesus. One betrayed him. And what does he have? What does it mean? Exactly this. That the result of being with Jesus is a consequence of your spiritual life. What is really important is to be with the Lord, independent of miracle, independent of a cure, independent of, uh, a, of a situation where you pray and the Lord opens up a door. It's not important for the life of the Christian because what is going to bring you to heaven is not this. What is going to bring you to heaven and, and what is going to allow you to remain alive and safe is knowing the scriptures and having an uh, unforgettable experience with the Lord Jesus. And you accepting the Lord as Savior of our life, independent of result, independent of benefits. What I want to say is, is exactly this, that the Sunday school is a way in which the Lord shows us uh, the Scripture so that we can know the Scripture. And the research is show us that when you're just a participant, when you are simply a student where you listen to stuff, when you're just a listener, the learning, the, the absorption of this, the teaching is below 10%. Did you know that? That's why there are modern methods in which the teaching today is a uh, 
is partic uh, in involves participation of the student. The teacher cannot simply be behind a, a teacher's desk and just keep talking, talking, talking. If the student does not participate, if the student does not research, if the student does not go on a follow-up and doesn't make an effort to learn this teaching, he and not going to, he's not going to assimilate things. He's not going to assimilate what is essential, what is the most important. And we see this in our service. And this is the text that we just read here. If we read verse 4, let's go to verse 4. And then Paul was in a city, in a city called Thessalonica. From verse 1. Now, when they had a pass through Amphipolis and Apollonia, then the Thessalonica, when there was a synagogue uh, of the Jews, then Paul, as he, his custom was, went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures. So, in verse 4, and some of them were persuaded and great multitude of devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. Few believed. Have you seen that? Did you see this? On, uh, on verse 11 shows the following. So now Paul was in, in another city. He was first in Thessalonica and there just a few believed. He was going to on the Sabbath and he would teach. But on 11, it gives more details. Now, Paul was in Berea. These were more fair minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed. And also, not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. Have you seen the difference? When you examine what is being taught to you, when you read, when you do a follow up, you are able to assimilate mu much more the teaching. When is, uh, there is participation of the student, when the teaching is given in, a, in an instructive way and the student is interested, the average of learning it is more than 80 percent. It is more than 80 percent the, the amount of assimilation of the information. So if we have visitors and, or Christians that only come on Sunday night, Sunday night is a blessed service, there is great music, the spiritual gifts are given, there is a prayer of the Holy Spirit, everybody leaves this place crying out, crying. But the, the visitor is going to leave this place with only less than 10% of the teaching. When a message just preached can be very well elaborated, can be well explained, it's a blessing, the preacher is spoken in a very beautiful way. The, the visitor, or even a member of the church, will absorb less than 10 percent. What You know what is going to remember the message? That Jesus is love. Jesus saved. The pastor said Sunday night, Jesus saved. Jesus forgives sins. That's all he's going to remember. What he is going to remember only what is good to him. He will only remember what causes him to justify himself before his himself, not before the presence of the Lord. Oh, but I went there. The pastor said that if we sin, we just need to plead for the blood of Jesus, and then we you can you're forgiven, then you can sin again. Then you go there, kneel down, and plead the blood of Jesus, and remain in sin. That's what he's going to uh, absorb. You know, when he will become a Christian, convert in 30 years, in 40 years, and there are many Christians that are like this inside of the church. Why? Because they only read the word, they only hear the word in a service on Sunday night, Sunday night when a service on on Saturday night, 
or in a service where the deacon and usher or uh, the woman is which who is ahead is just read the text and then they speak a little bit about the bible but when we participate when you open up your heart and you begin to study the word so the absorption of the, the contents mu much better simulation of the teaching and you begin to place that that teaching and practice in your life that's why the Sunday school is so important because Sunday school has a format of teaching where the pulpit it leaves the pulpit it's no longer here in front of the church and now it's part of the church and that the pastor it's not only the one that it speaks, the one that uh, who preaches, that brings the sermon. No, the Sunday school who participate on the Sunday school has learned a lot regarding the doctrine, and it is the doctrine that strengthens the body. It is the doctrine that strengthens the member of the church? The doctrine is what strengthen the Christian. And what is the doctrine? Let's go. What is the doctrine? What is the biblical doctrine? We already spoke about this many times and, and really 10% it's, it has been proven here in Pompano. Only 10% learns. At least one person. What is doctrine? What have we spoken about doctrine? Is a group of of elements that emerge from the head, from the mind of the pastor, right? As in, is that what it is? No. What is it then? It come out of the word. Doctrine is a group of elements that come out of the word. Pleading for the blood of Jesus, the means of grace, right? The consultation of the word. Fasting, prayer, praising the Lord, and all of it. And where do you find this? Because 50 years ago, a group left a church and then they began the, this doctrine, Maranatha, where you have to fast, you have to do a Ledon service, and you, you need to consult the Lord. No. Through a revelation, a group was moved by the Holy Spirit to want more, a little more. It's not like what they were not receiving a blessing from the Holy Spirit, but they wanted more. It was not an argument, it was not a, a split, but a group was awoken to learn more about the Word. A group of brethren, a small group of brethren, they were awoken by the Holy Spirit in order to go deeper in the Word and leave more the Word. It's not like they didn't have the Word where they were. No, that's not it. But they wanted more. And they wanted greater intimacy with the Lord. So today, this year, we celebrate 50 years. And this work of the Holy Spirit has been able to reach this group and now we have been able to, we have been reached also, and this group has spread to all the world. And the same way that Paul here in Acts and John, they were also preaching. They were preaching the new gospel, they were preaching regarding Jesus, the Christ who died but resurrected, and that was that message. Have you seen the Christ who died? He's alive. Believing where, Paul? Are you crazy? How is this man alive? Nobody sees him. He's alive. No, he's alive. And that was it, their message. And that's what they preached. The same spirit that used the primitive church in order to pro proclaim that Jesus was alive is the same spirit today that is using this work in order to proclaim that the same Jesus that was alive is coming back. But he's coming back in front where I didn't even know that he had left. But he's coming back. He's coming back to take his church. And that's why we have this responsibility 
of proclaiming this, of this responsibility of in, uh, warning those who are around us that they need to get ready in order to meet Jesus. But it's not going to be done in a reckless way. We need to know the one who is coming. And for this, it is necessary that we, we need to be learning about the word. You need to stop being just stop being just listeners. Stop uh, letting the preachers and the ones that will come to the to pulpit to simply give their a, a speech. But they need also to be the ones who are leaving the word. And the Sunday school is reserved for this because here the pulpit uh, disappears and the church participate. The church asks questions. The, the church receives tasks for the week. The topic of the Sunday school is also uh, 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 studied throughout the week and uh, the teaching on Sunday school has to be completed on, on the women's services and also in the teaching with the children. That's why the teaching on Sunday school is much greater because it is because the topic that is approached on Sunday school is, is supplemented during the week. It's not going to be forgotten. We are not criticizing the evening service or anything like that. We are speaking about the importance of the Sunday school. We are having the service of doctrines and the Thursdays. We are saying wonderful things. Now, sometimes we uh, tackle a topic and it, it lasts three weeks because people want to understand and it, it is this. And you want to know, we want you to understand one thing that somebody asks a question regarding a topic, a theme, it will be very difficult for that people, for that person to enter, to fall into this uh, trap. We're speaking about the letters of Jude. Who has read the book of Jude? Five people. No. Six. After they ask, he raises his hand. No. Have you seen the book of Jude? The letters of Jude, their letter of Jude, it's very rich. It shows many f flaws that we have, many failures that need to be removed. Jude speaks of um, the unfaithful. He speaks of the the, the Christians there are, they don't accept a hierarchy, the Christians that sleep, the Christians that sh should not even be in the church. Is a, a cloud without water. You know what is a cloud without water? What is a cloud without any water? Who didn't, it was in here in the last um, Tuesday. Who can answer what is a cloud without water? And then, you're called as a, a cloud without water, and then you ask yourself, is it good or bad? His, has he complimented me? Amen. Glory to God. Or Yes, a cloud of water. You know what is a cloud without water? Cloud of water is a cloud that has all the appearance that's going to rain. It's filled with water, but there's nothing inside of it. Uh, when the, a wind comes and the cloud goes away. Who works in, in a farm is just waiting for a cl cloud to come. Have you seen a, a dark cloud? A cloud that you look at and you think, oh, it's rain is coming. And that's what it is. But this cloud has all the appearance. But inside there's nothing. So any wind will bring this cloud to another place. And then the farmer keeps waiting. He waits for the rain that never comes. So what does that mean? That this is people that live in the church that don't have the water that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one, the representation of the Holy Spirit. What is the role? It is to wash us, cause us to be new creatures. So there are Christians inside of the church that live like that. 
they have appearance of servant, everything of a servant, but at the last moment, they leave a bad testimony. The first opportunity, they leave a track of bad testimony, and the Lord says, Lord have mercy. Those are people there, led by anything. There are people there, are like, oh, the Chumar Nathan service on Sunday night is a blessing, but a church. But the third the service is wonderful in this other church, and there is a, a special preacher that uh, prayer chain. So then they go back and f forth, and they are carried by the wind. Whatever there is uh, a Pentecostal service, that person wants to go. And also doctrine. They don't understand doctrine. They think that once you're saved, you're always saved. There are people that the people that have this understanding know that because God is the Father, and He will not going going to take me to hell. No, He's not going to carry to hell. He, you're going to go alone. You're going you're going to hell out of your own efforts. Well, but God is not going to allow this to happen. He's a God of mercy. He's not God has not created a man to go to hell. There are people that preach this, and they want other people to have this uh, type of understanding. So that when you understand the word, you can say, Lord, my, my brethren, if you go to hell, we are going out of your own means. And that's how it is. There are many other teachings. There are many other uh, beliefs that we s you see out there that if you don't have a strong and the stand of the word and the doctrine, you allow yourself to be carried by those winds of uh, false doctrines. And the word needs to be understood through the Holy Spirit because the Bible is what is in the mind of God. The Bible is what is in the mind of God. And God, through the Holy Spirit, using man, He delivers to us what He wants ab uh, off of man. But you need to understand it in the Spirit, because the Word kills, but the Spirit vivifies. That's what we have here, many denominations. That's why there are many churches that have the un un uh, uh, understand that it's opposite. They use the Word, use biblical verses to convince you that their understanding is the right one, and your understanding is wrong. Has the Bible said that you should keep Sabbath and Sabbath, Sabbath, Saturday? It's a commandment. Yes, one of the Ten Commandments. Isn't, isn't it true, Pastor Sabbath? And that's true. Jesus kept the Sabbath. Jesus uh, respected the law. He was faithful. Do you any does anyone here keep the Sabbath? Who doesn't work on Sabbath? Sabbath uh, Saturday. John? Angelita, she she doesn't work on Saturdays. Very good. Who else? Let me ask a question. Who keeps this Saturday as the day of rest? So you're you're not obeying the Bible, because the Bible asks you to keep the sa Saturday, and you're not keeping it. It's very difficult, but it, it is exactly this: is the understanding, the revealed understanding that allows us to understand. It's not just keeping one day, but it is keeping Jesus, who is our rest, having Jesus in us, reserve our lives in order for us to have this rest, this peace that only Jesus can bring to man. But in order for this to happen, we need to understand the doctrine. That's my brethren, that we uh, persist, that uh, Sunday school is, is one of the more ser services, more important services for the church, because here they already put the time there. We have 15 more minutes. Look at the clock. <laughs> Oh boy. 
Oh, yeah, in a few, in a few minutes it's going to go red. <laughs> you know? I spent a week uh, out of the church and things changed here. <laughs> but the word needs to be understood. You can see, Britain. Look at, at the clock there. Show for being <laughs> so the church can see. That's why it's right in front of me. How can you preach like that? <laughs> Look at the psychological pressure. <laughs> Pastor Saudi, is that true? Well, look, we need to, we need to bring the teaching to our lives. The service in the morning is this: if you are not giving the proper worth to the word, if you are not giving the proper worth to the teaching of of the Lord, place this in your life, and you see how you see results. The brethren there in Berea, they not only heard, but they also examined the scriptures, and they were placing this in practice in their lives, and many believed, many converted to the gospel. It's not those Christian that uh, it's a Christian that is always uh, being moved by uh, movements. You need to believe in Jesus with conviction. Is that, is that's the Holy Spirit that does that. The Holy Spirit is the one who will make you believe in Jesus. But in order for this to happen, you need to open up your heart. And for this, you need to absorb the word and teaching from the Lord. And when you play, do this, you put this in your life, you see results. Why? Because, why? Because when you see that, when it comes a difficult moment, when you see that, that the doubtful moment, an attack from the enemy, you have discernment, you understand that this is not from God. And that proposal, that uh, trap there, is from the enemy. It's to, that is there to steal your blessing. You understand that. That's why the Sunday school brings men to leave the word. You need to examine the scriptures. And that's what it is. It's not because I'm saying here. It's not because I'm preaching here. It's not because you enter the church where nothing and you are now hearing about fasting and early dawns. No. It is because in the Word, in where you're going to find this in the Word, in the entire Word. It's not only one, in a single chapter or in not a single book. It's not an experience of a uh, character of the Bible. No. But it's, it is the experience of all the servants, faithful servants that the Lord used so that today we could have those examples in our lives. Today, if we read the Word, if, if we study the Word, we would stop doing many wrong things. Because the Word of God is light for our feet. It's a lamp for our feet. So many failures of the uh, valiant service of the Lord, the Lord allowed them to have, Today, we should not fall into the same mistakes. We can make other mistakes, but those they could stop doing. And when you leave the Word, you advance spiritually. Because God sees you, He tries you, and you're approved. And God, God carries you and motivates you to move forward. So the Christian needs to leave the Word. That's why you need to come to the Sunday school. You need to participate. You need to examine the scriptures at home. Not only to, to leave the Bible at church, not only the service day of the service, you put the Bible under your arm and come. The Bible of the Christian should not be the, the Bible that you only carry under your armpit or the one that you leave on beside your bed and you want to consult the Lord for something and you go and open up and consult according to your his own necessity he always opens up the Bible only in Psalms he never opens up the Bible and the prophets he is always the, the, he knows that prophets is here Psalms here Some, he only opens there and the same he never reads a prophet 
is uh, limitations. Uh, Ezekiel, Isaiah, no, he only opens. And those texts there are wonderful, right? Uh, it, but the Bible, the Christian, is not this Bible that you carry under your armpit. But the Bible of the Christian is, is his testimony, is what he does, his actions, the way he acts with other people, the way he treats other people, the way he negotiates, and the way that he is out there, not only here. The Bible of the Christian is this. Nobody can hear anything on the back here. Pick up the microphone. Mark made a comment about a time in a region in Brazil. A brother who preached about the ten virgins, and he said that the foolish vir virgins were the church, because they're faithful church, because we're crazy, because they like to praise the Lord, and the world thinks that we're crazy. And, uh, they think that we're, we're the uh, foolish uh, virgins, which is a complete misunderstanding of the word. So when you begin to study the word, and you Realize that the teaching is the same from Genesis to Revelations. The teaching is the same, it's repetitive. But you need to go there and you have a revelation of the Holy Spirit in order to understand. That's why we, when we consult the Bible, we're going to have a, a teaching about consultation. And the Bible's not yes, no, God said it's and uh, two, one, three, zero. <laughs> consultation is, is the understanding. Of from the Lord inside of the text that you consulted, you're going to find exactly inside of the text the topic of your consultation. When you come to this level, you will realize that the word is all the same word. There is a teaching there in Revelation, another one in Genesis. No, it is the whole uh, history of the church and the whole history of life. That's why for God, there's no time. The Bible was written in many thousand years. But for God, it's just an instant. That's why for God, the Bible is, makes sense. And for us, it's the same. Because the Bible is written in a twinkling of an eye. For God, there's no time of Noah or Abraham. For God, that's not how it is. So the, the Word of God is genuine. And if we put the Word of God in evidence in our life as something that we need to live, we will have a church of Pompano Beach much more uh, fervorous, much more blessed. We can even say more renewed in the presence of the Lord. There's nothing wrong with this. The, the service is blessed. There's nothing wrong with them. We're having this. We pray for the Lord so that the Lord cure and save. This is answer to prayers. But this is not the most important. You understand what I mean? This is not the only important thing. What is important that we, is that we know the Lord and having our structure based in the doc biblical doctrine of the Lord. Amen. Do you guys have any question? Pastor Sabado, you want to add anything? We're going to have, that's why we always ask the brethren to be here on Tuesday, because there are topics. Oh, this is very repetitive, I've heard this. But there are details that, in that teaching, you learn in the same way as we are going to learn. That there, there isn't someone that knows everything. You're, you're cherubim and anointed to protect and and reestablish you in the midst of the stones of fire you walked. But we are going to we're going to have a, a teaching. We're going 
deeper in the teaching. No, it's not that we know more. The brand asks the question, and the question you ask brings uh, a better understanding. <coughs> the question that you ask awakens us and understand that we didn't realize. And sometimes the question blesses us. Sometimes you think that you know everything, and you ignore the Sunday school or uh, the service on Tuesdays. But the touching is much better. We want to speak about Philip and the eunuch. He knew the word of Moses. He knew everything. But he didn't have an experience with Jesus. It is reading, examining, that you will learn the teaching. Exactly. Amen, my brother. Let's hear the children. to sing a cappella. Amen. Let us stand up. I'm going to award a glorification to the Lord from the part of one of the bread. Between the canal, kneel down. Intermediary and adolescents. Pastor Sabre is going to pray for them. Lord, we pray for the grace and mercy that is in the blood of Jesus. We present before your altar each children kneeling down. We ask that your hand may be laid upon each one of them. Guide them on the path that they need, need to walk. Give them salvation, health, and life. Bless also their families. Bless also uh, the teachers in the teaching of the word. We pray in the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Receive, Lord, the service in adoration to your name. Take us home in peace. Rest that we may be able to enjoy. 
from this moment all the way to the evening service. Take advantage uh, of this moment to once again to send the net of the Lord. So for those who need to have a meeting with the Lord, give us boldness and authority and use us with might in your hands. And so that we have a service according to your will, a blessed service. So pray we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. Any announcement? We have a meeting with Group C, Group A as well. We really need to put on the board there the hours for the 24-hour prayer is going to be at the end of the month and we should not leave it for the last minute because Sabbath, Sab Saturday we need to fill out the, the schedule so that we're going to put a board there so that the brethren can already choose their 15 minutes of prayer. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord.